Hi, internet. Welcome back. Two times in one month. <laughs> We're like the freaking double whopper of double vegan whopper of book clubs. Anyway, uh, we did a hangout earlier uh, this month where we read our mom's um, book recommendation. So you can check that out. I'll just put it wherever the little bubble thing appears. But this month, not this month, this week, uh, back to regular programming. Um, one of us chooses a book and we read it and then we get together and we talk about it. And because this month is Andrea's pick, uh, she will have some questions for us after we kind of like give our initial thoughts. So uh, before we get into it, uh, you will find in the description our tip jar if you like what you see uh, and want to throw a few dollar bills at us, <laughs> then uh, you can do so at the coffee link. Um, you can give up as much as you want. My mom gave us such a big tip last time. I was <laughs> so touched. <laughs> that was really sweet. Um, but also, that being said, hello, new friends. We always get like one or two new people uh, showing up to the to the party. Um, you can also find links to uh, Andrea's Amazon books. You can check out Westwood Monster Patrol and the novella A Christmas Barranda. Uh, you can check out Tashai's creative writing at thinktashai.com. And you can check out, I'm mostly on Instagram, so you can check that out. I've got a zine coming out pretty soon digitally. And if you want to contribute, I'll put a link to that as well, as well as all of our socials. So <laughs> with that out of the way, let's talk about the book that you chose, which is over here. Maybe. <laughs> yes, because I lent it to you. <laughs> yes. But uh, Tashai has their own copy too. Yeah. So I'm really excited. It's so cute. Tash, um, I don't remember what you called this type of cover, but I really like it. Oh, so um, this is, it's a soft touch and it soft has touch. a spot gloss effect. What'd you call me? Shiny. I know soft touch. <laughs> so, Jaya, why mm -hmm. did you pick this book? <laughs> so I picked the book because I've been following the author for a really long time on Instagram, probably probably close to two years at this point. And um, when the first book came out, I, I actually bought that for my classroom. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm an ESL teacher, so I try to have like a really diverse library. Um, for my kiddos. And so I have a copy of the first book there. And the first book is kind of just a collection of different comics, sort of more like the Instagram pages where it's like, here are things that people say to me every day. And this is how I handle it kind of thing. And so I was really excited to see that this book was a little bit different in that it was more memoir kind of thing. Um, and just talking about how she met her husband and how that whole arranged marriage came to be. Um, and so I thought that was really interesting. One, because like I said, I've been following Huda for a really long time and like find her interesting as a person anyways. But two, because there's really not a lot of like true story arranged marriage kind of romance out there, I feel. Well, there's not really even that much fiction <laughs> versions of it, but I feel like true memoir is, is pretty rare. And this is like graphic novel meets like comic kind of thing. And so I just thought it was really cool all around and something different for us to read uh, for book club. So yeah. and I think it was a good pick. Again, it's just so cute. The cover is Thank so adorable. <laughs> and I like her comic too. And um, I started following her on Instagram as well. She's a uh, super funny comic. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> I forget what it is that what it is that she's doing right now. What the name of like that art challenge that she's doing is. Hold on, let me pull it up really quick. <laughs> what is it? Okay. Yes, I'm hot in this is the name of the Instagram. It's super funny. Oh yeah, we should have said that before too. You should follow her. She's really Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll put a link on it. And this is for, let's see. I don't remember what what it's called is it just like rama drawn rama drawn oh, 2020 that's so cute it's making her way making her way through ramadan and uh coincidentally just so happens that we are doing our our hangout uh at the end of the fast so happy Eid to um Ooh. all of our practicing muslim fans um <laughs> So. Oh, I've never seen her in real life. I just added her on Instagram. 
Woo-hoo. Yeah, she does. Sometimes she she posts like videos on her story, and um, yeah, that's the first time I've ever. I, I saw her for the first time a few months ago too, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> she's not a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> very cute. Just just super cute. I like that her um, husband's drawing looks like Ivan a little bit. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> now that you mention it. It is true, actually. I can't I unsee it. it. And I saw it. I was like, I didn't look at you as a cartoon. Do you have the same reaction that she did when she first saw him? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll go ahead and read the sure. read the back and then we'll talk about how much we because we're just gonna gush about how much it like I know that we all really Well, love this I actually book. I actually thought because I know that we all loved it and it's a very short book, I, I didn't want to do like the traditional set of questions that we always do. So mm-hmm. I was thinking we could do something a little bit different. So Ooh. um with younger kids, sometimes when they read nonfiction, we do a KWL chart. What? <laughs> okay, let me get my let me get my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> so usually, when you do it with kids, you sit them down before they read the book. The K column is what you already know about the topic. The mm-hmm. W is what you want to know, and that can come up as you read it. And then the final one is L, which is what did you learn. But I figured we would swap it. We would do no, like what did we already know about arranged marriage? Mm-hmm. What did we learn in this book? And then what do we still want to know will be our last one. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Good. Because that I, I didn't get the assignment teacher. So I did not do my homework. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, this is just like on the spot. You don't need to prepare for it. Oh, terrible <laughs> test. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get it on yet. This is no, this is great. Uh so okay, so we'll Go over, uh, so we don't do impressions. Is that what you want to do? We don't do the general impressions. No, we can do our general impressions about the book and the story, maybe like more focus on the romance. And then we can uh-huh. do our little, our little KLW. All right, cool. All right, so I, you'll feel like, I feel like she really does try to make this book very educational too, mm-hmm. and not just like the cute story of her and her husband. So I thought it would be a fun little. Uh, it is super fun. I'm, I'm down. Super flashback. I am triggered, but like in a good way. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> years of teaching, but like those activities rock. Okay, so um, the back says chaperones, suitors, and arranged marriages aren't only reserved for the heroines of a Regency period romance novel. They're just another walk in the park for this leading lady who is on a mission to find her leading lad. From the brilliant comic, yes, I'm hot in this, Huda Fami uh, <laughs> tells the hilarious story of how she met and married her husband, navigating mismatched suitors, gossiping aunties, and societal expectations for Muslim women. That can be arranged deftly and hilariously reveals to readers what it can be like to find a husband as an observant Muslim woman in the 21st century. So re- so relevant in today's evolving cultural climate, Fami's story offers a perspective and personal glimpse into the sometimes sticky but ultimately rewarding balance of independent choice and tradition. I read that. Ooh. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is that is what I read. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah I don't. Need, okay. I don't know. Should you? Who wants to start? You could say like what you rated it and and why, just very briefly, and then we'll get into we'll get into specifics. Drea, I noticed that out of the three of us, <laughs> you gave it four stars, <laughs> and I, I I would like to know why. <laughs> I did honestly. the The only reason I gave it four stars is because I thought that she was trying trying to do two separate things: one to educate non-Muslims on how arranged marriage works like right now in the times that we're living in and like what kind of the process is. And then two, tell like the romantic story of her and her husband. And I really liked that because I really liked all the like easy to access educational funny bits she put in there. But it also left me wanting more of the romance. Like I wanted to know more about her and her husband's courtship and I wanted to know more about like what happened after they got married like they clearly have a really great relationship and I know that he's one of the 
people who really encourage her to even start drawing comics and stuff like that. And they have, they have a really good relationship. So I just wanted to see more of that. Um, and I mean, I don't know, now I feel bad about it. I feel like I'm probably going to switch it to five because no. I do. I mean, it, it happens. Like I sometimes, after we do our talks, sometimes I'll be like, you know what? I actually really freaking hated that book. And then I'll Yeah, no, I mean, I really, I, I love her and I want to support her work. And so I feel like I'll probably change it to a five because it's such like a minor thing. Like I, it's really not like, it's like when you have that like really great student in your class and you're like, oh, I know I can hold you to higher standard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I get it. One of those things. Like I just, I just wanted more of the romance, but I didn't necessarily want less of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. I just maybe I wanted, but I get the like drawing also takes a really long time. You know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. it, it's going to feel like a short book because it's going to be a shorter book because it, you know, it has a lot of drawings that take a lot of time to make and you're not going to make like a 400 page <laughs> graphic novel. It would take forever. Mm -hmm. So I get it. I it. will probably, you know, I'm going to see, I'm going to switch my rating right now. <laughs> oh. oh, well, while you do that, Tosh, I noticed that you had said something, but I didn't quite catch it. So did you want to, did you want to say it again? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I said. Okay, me neither. That's oh, why I was like, she, oh, gosh. She said, oh, um, that it would be really hard to do like a long 400 something page graphic novel. And I was thinking about the Watchmen series. And like, yeah, it's, it's, even if you are able to make something that big, then it gets a little hard to like read through as yeah. well because you're paying attention to all the design and drawing details, yeah. and trying to catch stuff in the background. So it's a lot more involved. Yeah. And as far as I know, she's, she's doing it all. She's writing and drawing. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. And she's still maintaining, you know, her Instagram page with like constant like new comics on there too. So, mm -hmm. girl, yeah. yay! Cool. I, I think that it's I think that it's fair. I think that if you had left it at four stars, I wouldn't have like judged you um, because it is it's fine. I also I too wanted more, but I didn't. I was like, I'm not gonna quibble with this. Like, it's it's yeah. fine. I, I already changed it. <laughs> five stars across the board wait now i gotta go to my i have to go to my spreadsheet and change our rating so while i do that tosh tell us why what you rated it and, <laughs> and like what you liked about it and you know just uh give us your your thoughts um so i gave it five stars um i wrote it in like an hour probably less i was probably multitasking um and then taking breaks to read while i was making food um, but yeah, I gave it five stars. It was super cute. I had a really fun time reading it. Um, I think that it 100% represents all of the fun stuff that you get from the comics on Instagram and the, the shorter um, little bits that she lets you into um, when she's talking about her life. I thought it was really sweet to see uh, more about her family relationships and um, learn a little bit about kind of her background um i don't know if she delves into like what she studied or um, any of her family histories in her instagram posts uh, since i just followed her right now i've more <laughs> seen her comments in passing more than anything else um but i really enjoyed it it was a really fun happy light read i appreciated the educational bits um that it includes and, you know, I did learn a couple of new things. Um, this isn't my first time kind of experiencing a story that involves arranged marriage as a form of, like, entertainment. I watched, I've watched a lot of movies before that involved arranged marriages, but this is 100% the one of the few that has, like, like a positive spin or n a, a, a clear conversation and, and clear communication between like a child and her parents and there wasn't this level of pressure um that I feel a lot of movies for the dramatic value you know it, there needs to be something moving the plot up across and a lot of times family tensions add a lot more to it um but the fact that it seems like you know this was a conversation she had with her family and everyone was like get to know these people and you know we're not forcing you to do anything you don't want to do and if you don't meet anybody we can take our time with this if you do meet some like it was refreshing to not have arranged marriage framed as this tool that's only there to put the heroine in like 
a situation that's very, very tense and creates distance or frustration between her and her family. Like that's kind of what I've experienced in the past in movies. So no, it was really nice. And yeah, I'm a big fan. I enjoyed it. I read it really quickly. I thought it was really sweet. I wasn't bored at any point. I love the Jane Austen notes, the like <laughs> recurring tea <laughs> thing and all of the joke. Like it's just, there's so many little jokes throughout that I like, didn't expect. The Pokemon? <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. yes. There were so many jokes where I just, I laughed out loud and I was sitting next to Ivan and he's like, what? And I'm like, you need to fucking read this book. I can't even explain to you how funny. <laughs> you should know, Ivan, you're is. in this book. You're in this book. See, this is you. <laughs> this is you. You're doing this. But even just, there were so many small, like, just the visual gags. The She's holding a bag with tiny Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's so many tiny, she's like, I'm actually pretty busy, but thanks. The cover, like, it's fucking, it's cute. It's cute. I feel like I could hang with her and, yeah. and joke I had around. Seen a and comment. I, had, I had seen a comment. Um, I don't think it was on Goodreads. I'm somewhere else. Cause sometimes I'll just kind of like look shop through to see this is what I gave it. What did other people think? Uh, am I crazy? Um, and someone was like, I thought I found the drawing a bit, you know, crude. And I'm like, come on. She's not an art major. Shut up. <laughs> Also, that that's her style. That's like, her yeah. style. And that's, and maybe it doesn't have to be. This maybe it wasn't that person's preferred style of art, but it just yeah. her comment was just annoying. I'm like, shut up, You're stupid. Everyone, shut up, Karen. Everyone has a different drawing style, and and I feel like this style really reflects her her whimsy and yeah. the <laughs> kind of the fun stuff they enjoy. And I laughed my fucking ass off because in this one scene he gave her personalized magic the gathering yeah. cards and i lost i thought of you when i read that class. i thought of you because i know you play magic and it was just great I was like, something for the pokemon lovers or something for the magic lovers or something for every every little bit of geek that there is between the yes. three of us yes. and i also i also love that she is very like true to how she lives her life in the sense that I really, I really like the note that she had at the beginning of the book where she's like, listen, people, when I'm at home, clearly I have my hair all out and whatever. But in this book, you're never going to see it because you guys aren't my family. And this comic is like an extension of me. And so it would feel like, and I, I would have never even thought about that. I hadn't even thought about the fact that in her comics, like clearly she draws herself at home and like just with her husband, but like she's always wearing the hijab and it had never occurred to me like, oh, right. Like in real life, she she doesn't do that, but mm -hmm. because she's sharing this with the public. And so I thought that was a really sweet way to, sh to share those like really personal moments with us mm -hmm. while still staying like really authentic true and staying life. true to her culture. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So. I really liked that too. I appreciated the note because it, I, like you said, it, it never would have occurred to me to even think yeah. of it because to me it's like, oh yay, fun comic. But yeah, yeah a hundred percent. If she's like in a backyard hangout with her husband, or if she's like in her living room, like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Also, look at him; he's just eating a whole pie. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's super cute. And um, not to say, like, not to say anything of your art skills, Tosh, but like, I could definitely see you drawing this. I'm trying to peer, I've been peer pressuring Ivan for like fucking months to do a cartoon of us as cows because of an inside joke that we have. Oh my God. God. I would follow that in a heartbeat. Me too. Cows? That's like my favorite. We're literally, there's like a, a future tattoo in, in discussion. So keep an eye out. A vaquita. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> All right, Christina, how did you feel about this, you magical? Well, girl? controversially, I, oh, yeah. just kidding, also really enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed the fuck out of this book. Uh, my sister saw me reading it and enjoying it. And so um, she ended up reading it as well. Um, and she, she thought it was really, she thought it was really cute. I liked how, how earnest it is. I like how transparent it is with, you know, um, in moments when she is just not feeling great about it all. Um, 
But I also, I think what I like the most about it is just what a dork she she was. <laughs> like she's such a dork. Um, and not not just because of the, not just because of the Pokemon and the magic, but also did all of the Jane Austen stuff when she kind of like compares her situation or or draws parallels between Jane Austen's characters and what's going on with with her life and how there are traditions to be followed and and certain like you know certain I don't want to say ceremonies. Uh, what's the word I'm thinking about? What's the word I'm looking for? Certain rituals. Rituals. No, not, not not rituals either. Just just expectations, I guess, that are just put on women and and, and men and the courting. Um, so I thought that was I thought that was really really cool. I, I didn't know anything about I don't I didn't know anything about her uh, before this pick. So thanks, Drea, for introducing us to her. Um, and I learned a lot. I am ready <laughs> with my chart. So. I send you guys a Snapchat of like <laughs> what my KLW looks like. I'm ready <laughs> oh. for my assignment. But yeah, I gave it five stars. I too wanted uh, more of their romance, like what their daily is like. Mm -hmm. I hope that she does collect those into a book because I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Um, so I hope that comes next. Like I hope that that can be arranged becomes like, Honey, I fucking where's love my, my husband <laughs> by Huda Fami, but like obviously not that title. <laughs> something else. Maybe just uh, something reader. really something reader, reader I clever. married. What happened? Yeah, just yeah, reader, reader, I, reader I married him or something. Something <laughs> really clever like that. Um, something clever that she's gonna come up with without my help at all because like, <laughs> she's literally way better at it than me. Um, delete, delete. But yeah, overall, super cool. Super cool book. I learned a lot and she's a dork and I'm happy to have her in my library now uh, and on my Instagram feed. So, uh, okay, so uh, Andrea, I pass the torch on to you. I pass the banana on to you. New banana, guys, I got a new stress banana between now and the last hangout because You're I broke just, it. It was so long. I it's think that's banana. what like weirds me out about them. It's just that, you know. It's, this one's very long. This it's, one's, yeah, it's more robust. So I can play with it a lot more. I will not distract you though. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what is what you is something that what? Christina should have warned us beforehand, and I would have bought a banana. And then when she did that, I've been like, <laughs> oh, okay, I'll I'll get you guys bananas, <laughs> and then we can do the pass the banana like like we we'll pass the pass the conch shell like in the Lord of the Flies was. Oh um, God. <laughs> Let's not use that as our example. <laughs> I was gonna ask each of you to share something that you already knew about arranged marriage prior to reading the book. Okay, not a lot. <laughs> Honestly, not a lot. I was, and here's the funny thing, or not the funny thing. Maybe funny, maybe sad, but. Um, I just don't have any Muslim friends that I know of. And so it's like one of those things where it just wasn't even a thing to me outside of fiction uh, for me to think about very hard. Um, so every uh, idea that I had about arranged marriage comes from, from that, from fiction. And that, you know, usually the girl doesn't want it or, or maybe the, the, the partner is much older, you know, like whoever is chosen is, is much older for, and you know, it's usually like not something that it's done, but um, it's generally not like the ideal situation or, or, you know, something that will make at least the girl in the, in the arrangement very happy. Um, that's, that's yeah. what I, what, no, the I, idea. I get, what you're, I get what you're saying. Cause like, I, I actually do have, and I work with several women who I think you know are, that's how they met their husbands but mm -hmm. I always feel like that's not something I can be like oh hey friend like was your mm -hmm. mm -hmm. marriage like how did that go you know what I mean because I'm not like that close to them so I feel like this is the first book where I felt like a friend was telling me her story <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I definitely learned a lot even just realizing the things that I don't think about mm-hmm what about you, Tosh? 
Um, so I've watched a lot of movies and granted most of my experience with any sort of like arranged marriage situation or conversation, I think has usually centered more around like Bollywood films. <laughs> <laughs> like that's uh, in my, in my youth, the Gonzalez Ortiz household was very much like we watched Bollywood movies all the time, like Monsoon Wedding. Like there's just just a lot, a lot of a lot of me and my mom. I'm I'm painting this probably very unrealistic and unfair picture of your mom now, where she like reads like ghost bondage books and dances to Bollywood films. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not wrong. This like figure is presenting itself in my imagination. Um, it's whatever, whatever figure you're probably visualizing is likely real because it, <laughs> it's, it's um, it was not a weird sight in my household for my mom and I to be watching like a Bollywood movie or a movie with arranged marriages that has a lot of music. And then at the end, when the music's finishing, my mom would like stand up and start dancing. Thing. and then we would like stand around the living room because we were like yay happy ending um but so that's that's like the 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 most experience with arranged marriage conversations that i've had um i know that there's different like steps i already knew there were different steps involved and um that there were certain people within like the friend community or the family community that you could turn to if you wanted to start setting up meetings um so i know there's usually like a specific leader within the community or you can reach out to like certain women within the community who are like matchmaky people like that's the person to go to um and i know that um the initial meetings it's like i think there's a lot more family involved and then as you start getting to know someone more then I think usually it reduces to fewer chaperones being involved. Um, you know, this reminds me of a little bit. And now that I now that we're talking about it, sorry to cut in, but I wanted to say it before I forgot. We did read erotics, the erotic yeah, stories yeah. for Punjabi widows, and I do remember that the main character's sister opted for An arranged um, like yeah. for arranged marriage, and it was very like she. It was actually super pleasant for her. I know that the main character was. I guess similarly to me at the beginning, like, no, how could you? That's so outdated. And yeah. and then the sister was like, yo, it like works for people and it's probably gonna work for me. I really enjoy the idea. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that again, not from like people in my immediate circles, but like on the internet and stuff. I have heard a lot of women say, like, well, it's like online dating, but your family and your friends who know you super well are helping you to like find this perfect match. And so like, I, I feel like I, I, I had a very neutral attitude towards it before reading the book because I had also heard from so many people who did see it as a positive experience. But I do, I think for me personally, this is the most like personal insight like i feel mm -hmm. like someone that i know even though that's not the case at all and i've mm -hmm. never met huda but i feel I know like her someone that i truly know is just telling me all of these details gotcha. so well, that yeah. was really cool i i agree i agree a lot because it 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 becomes more about like i do like the educational aspect of it because these are things like you mentioned that i not only is it kind of weird to reach out to someone and ask the questions but we also just don't have like growing up in puerto rico like where were we supposed to meet anyone who practiced anything other than like a thought yeah. like no, 100 percent yeah. puerto rico for those of you who don't know like puerto rico is like 99 percent christian specifically certain branches of christianity but but overall just like christian like i didn't there, there's, I think there's like a handful of synagogues in the whole island, you know, like there's very, very few Jews and forget about any other religions like mm -hmm. outside of that. I did have a lot of students. I did, uh, when I was teaching, I had a, quite a few students that, um, that were practicing, but, but, but also, those are the only, those are the only people that I knew as well. But, but, also but that was like once you were, that, once you were a though. teacher, right? Yeah, exactly. Like when you were a student, did you, cause I... Uh, in well, yeah, but obviously not in Puerto Rico. In New York, I had yeah. a ton of friends that yeah. that yeah. For, no, oh, in Puerto oh. Rico, I went to school with one person who was from Bangladesh, 
and and had come, I don't remember why she had come to Puerto Rico, but that was literally the only person no. from from like my entire school life until 12th grade that I ever met who was not Christian. <laughs> Just and like crazy. I went to the same private school for 14 years. So like my class had 20 people that I knew since yeah. I was six years old. No, so, it's crazy how like not diverse at all. At least, I mean, I, I do think like you said, Chris, that like it is becoming more diverse, but but at the time that we were in school, it was definitely very much a a Christian bubble for sure. Yeah, yeah. So it was good. It was um, the I think the basic framework of what an arranged marriage entails. I had experience with, um, but there there was definitely there's always definitely room for learning new things, and so yeah. and I think above all. I, I will say that my attitude towards arranged marriage was definitely not positive. It was, it like was either like neutral or a uh, due to ignorance or just, you know, the, the idea of like that, that choice, right. Being taken away, taken away from you. Um, and, you know, at least that's how I perceived it again, because that's just like, the, those were even the, the stories that I, that I was, that I was reading the media that I was exposed to. So I just pictured it in a, I just saw it in a very negative light and never did I imagine that it could be something as like democratic <laughs> as, uh, as uh, this book has shown me that it, that it can be. Yay. Uh, oh no, what happened oh, to Desha? <laughs> mm -mm. Cool. But, okay, well we'll pause until Tosh can rejoin us. <laughs> oh, she is back. Let me let her in. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, okay. So okay, so that so I think overall none of us knew a whole lot. So what's something that you learned that was completely new to you? I know there there's probably a lot of things, but you know, in the effort to keep this concise, pick one. I would say I was not Surprised isn't the word. It was like refreshing to see that the level of pressure she received from her parents was way less than anything I'd ever seen or read or like perceived through the different entertainment mediums that I'd seen before. Because anytime I'd ever read about arranged marriages, either in yield English or um, in like the Bollywood movies or whatever, there's usually a much higher level of pressure from the parents of like hey this is the first guy you're meeting like you need to say yes to him no you can't say no like you don't have that many options you don't have that many like those many opportunities you need to say yes to like this guy this guy or this guy or if not you're never gonna get married like it didn't seem like that at all in this situation you know um she expresses to her parents, you know, like, I think this is what I've decided I want to do. It's really important for me to marry someone who values our traditions in the same way that our family does. And so the only way that I feel I can really, really do that is by reaching out to people within my community because they know what we value most. And so it was really refreshing and like nice. It was good. It was, it was, it helped me just like, really be a lot more open-minded and understanding because as someone who really has issues with books that try to like peer pressure the the choice of what the rest of your life is going to be like like that's always been something that came up in romance novels and movies and stuff I was watching when I was growing up and I hated it and that's why I hate Eric Connick Jr. because he always <laughs> No, because he's he because his character in a lot of movies is always mm -hmm. the guy that the person's being like peer pressured into choosing. Yeah, or he's just nice, and, like so he he's nice and so he Chris deserves. He's nice and so he deserves to get to the insert, girl. Chris needs to insert a link to like <laughs> for more Harry Connick Jr. bashing. See, Check out our I need day. to write an article. I need to write an article about this just to explain because it's not him. It's that he's come to represent this like he's nice, <laughs> so he deserves to win the woman trope that I hate, and so with mm -hmm. the ranged marriage entertainment it's it's a it's the idea of like well you need to you need to be with this person or this person or this person or you're never going to find someone there's like specific tropes that i just i'm not or into. you need to be with this person because like it benefits our family and so you know, exactly you're helping out the family by doing this exactly there's like a level of self-sacrifice that always ends up showing up 
in the stuff I've seen previously. And in this one, it's like, you know, her, her dad was really trying to like interview these guys and like grill them and be like, I don't think that guy's good for you. He seems like a dick in nicer <laughs> words. Like this guy's really boring. This guy's not going to be able to accept you. It didn't seem like they were ever really trying to like change her. There were things she did that were kind of like, oh, my God, my daughter's a fucking dork type of thing. Of like, <laughs> oh, God, like, why are you guys into these sh Oh, my gosh. I was like, you're an adult. The what, shy, what the if hell? You, but now that you're following who does Instagram, her mom, she does comics with her mom all the time. And they're hilarious. It'll be like oh shit, my mom is gonna be here in three weeks. I need to start cleaning now for two hours every day. And it'll be like, the house will be like sparkling. And then her mom will get there and be like, there's a hair behind the toaster. You are a shitty wife. Stuff <laughs> like that all the time. So, so it's, it, was, it was really, really nice and refreshing to be like, oh yeah, they have a 100% normal. Yeah parent child relationship yeah. and there's not that added stuff of like if you don't marry the first of the first three men that you meet you're gonna put our family to shame and like that's gonna be you know you've made a giant mistake yeah they definitely so, did make comments like oh you're gonna be a spinster you're gonna be a cat lady but you know there was there was that but also like fine if that's what you want to do then also yeah i mean we want the best for we want what's best for you who hasn't heard those comments before? <laughs> Let's yep. be honest. Once you, some things less, transcend. Some things transcend. Just, just transcend cultural cultural boundaries. lines. Yeah, it's it's less so now because now it's like, ah, uh, you got married when you were twenty five. Um, okay. Oh my god! What did you do? Everyone's then. No one's getting married until they're like thirty five. What are you even doing? But oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. There's. <laughs> So that, that's my that's my answer. What about you, Chris? What did I learn? I guess the same thing to Shy learned. <laughs> um, no cheating. Well, no, I'm not cheating. That was the biggest lesson for me that it could be that it could because there's I guess what I learned is that there is a difference between like an arranged marriage where you're, it's like a team of people and that, you know, your family is a team and they're rooting for you and like a, a forced marriage, you know? Yes. Uh, and where there's absolutely no say. So I thought arranged marriages were forced marriages. Um, but now I know that that's not the case. Like, obviously I read this and then I went online. Uh, if I say anything like incorrect, it's mainly out of ignorance. I just didn't know. And I only had like a, couple of days to just kind of like read through um but uh yeah I, I thought that it was a forced forced affair um and I also I guess think that it's it's actually really practical <laughs> to if you are really looking for someone who shares right that who who also like shares your values then this is kind of like the way to go um especially if it's just like this open and this like collaborative and this like, mm -hmm. I also think that it's really cool that she does do a disclaimer at the beginning, aside from the hijab stuff about um, how this isn't like the Muslim story. This is her story and how her family and her community kind of like, uh, or her peers, right. Um, helped make this happen for her. Uh, but that is not necessarily the case with all families and all situations. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a really cool and, and interesting disclaimer. But um, yeah, I just like, oh shit, this is super chill. Okay, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's basically yeah. that was basically my reaction to it. Um, I don't know if you uh, gleaned anything else. Um, I did go down a rabbit hole, and I found that there is an app. <laughs> it's called really? Muz Muznatch. Uh, M U Z match, uh, and it's an it, it. There's like an app, and it's got it's so funny. Uh, I, the picture that I'm looking at, it's like guy, uh, not Guy Ritchie, Lionel Ritchie. You can show uh, it on screen, by the way. Oh, okay, cool. Let me let me find it here. You just have to hit present now at the bottom. Okay, present now on the other screen. Here I go. Put that now. <laughs> Close all your other tabs. A tab? <laughs> Do I just pick it? 
You can choose whether to share a specific go. tab or your whole window. Can you see it? Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Hello. Yay. Is it me you're looking for? Oh and so I was God. actually, yeah, this was, I, I had this open. Um, and, you know, Muslim women are leaning into arranged marriages. It's not like a very new article, but um, this recent enough. They, they were talking about this app. And wow. I just thought it was really cute. Uh, there's, I can forward this to you guys. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, I don't I don't necessarily know this, but I just thought it was interesting <laughs> um, to see. So Nice. I no, discovered that there is an app. There's an app for that. <laughs> I mean, and also when you think about it in terms of like, this is going to be you marrying into another family for the rest of your life. Do we all want to make sure our parents get along and that I get along with my partner's parents and that they're all understanding of how I am as a person? Because you read all these horror stories of like your in-laws hating you, like just people hating the family that they're marrying into. And even, even like your own expectations for your partner. Like I really like that scene where she was at the conference and she went to talk to that like love guru person mm -hmm. and he was like well what are you looking for and she's mm -hmm. like he needs to be this and this and this and and he was like well do you really want some because she she wanted like the smartest of all men and the most like faith devoted of all men and he was like okay but you want someone who's going to be your equal right so like you don't want someone who's like super below you but also you don't want someone who's super above you or else you're never going to see eye to eye and like that mm -hmm. whole conversation oh. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, like that's how that's how a lot of people are to walk looking me for a partner <laughs> Yeah, I like that. And I also thought it was really cute talking about the book. Um, I genuinely appreciated the amount of time that was taken to, that she took to really kind of like focus on herself. Okay, I'm not going to worry about finding a partner. I'm going to focus on myself. And she kind of like strays from that. It's like, I'm going to focus on myself. Mm -hmm. And even even then, you know, she has that conversation. And it's when she's not even trying that something just happens. And that's just, isn't that, isn't that always the case when you're like, I give up, boom. Mr. Wright, Mrs. Wright <laughs> appears, and and uh, I thought that was really cute. I'm like, of course, of course, of course, that's how I would be. So I also like that she had like this. This is a book in 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 the plain explanation of what this book is. It's a book about how she found the love of her life, but in a majority of the book, it's about her relationship with her parents and her relationship mm -hmm. with her female friends. No, and, and her parents are divorced. I was shocked. I said, yeah. what? I didn't, I didn't expect that either. Like that was like, oh, okay, interesting. And so it does make it a more three-dimensional three -dimensional understanding mm -hmm. of what is considered, you know, like, cool. Like, all right, yeah, we're mm -hmm. good with this, but you know, we, yeah. And even though they were divorced, they were still like her relationship mentors. Again, yeah. in, the con yeah. in the concept of this book, who knows what yeah. really went down. And, but. and they only got separated after like 30 something years. Like it's a matrimonio. That's a marriage. And people grow as they grow older. They grow, sometimes they grow in different directions. And if you can still yeah. work together and raise a kid and, you know, have a family unit, like just because you're not married doesn't mean you're not a family still. So it was refreshing to just see so many more dimensions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marrying for love. Bah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's something that you still want to know? What's something you want to know more about? Their relationship. I just yeah, want to sure. know. It's <laughs> just really cute. I what wanna... kind of deck does he use? Like, is it, you know, <laughs> what does he stack his deck with? That's really what I want to know. Yeah. Is he like trying to be a, a, a neutral player? Is he canceling spells? Is he trying to up his <laughs> life? You know? What team do they belong to? Are they uh, um, the red team, the blue team, or the yellow team? <laughs> you know what? What Pokemon? Like oh, what gyms Pokemon. are they taking over? <laughs> Those are the things that I want to know. But uh, no, aside from that, I guess I would like to know. Okay, not just between them, but like now that the matchmaking has occurred, what what are the roles of the family now? Now that you have helped your daughter get her partner. What happens? There's there definitely isn't a fade out. They're still like very present in their lives. So like what what things change and 
I also, I guess, would would have liked to know, or would like to know, like what things she needed help with once she was already, in, you know, in a relationship with, with the guy. You know, uh, it's kind of like a, what kind of advice did she need from her mom? And did she need it? You know, what you know. So those are the things that I would I would like to know. But but it's not not about arranged marriages, but I guess specifically about her and in the situation that she's presented us. Yeah, I, I, I want to, I just wanted to see more of, yeah, I think we said it before, just like their, their day-to-day life. I feel like she shares a lot on her Instagram page yeah. about um, her day-to-day life with her husband and her friends and her coworkers and that kind of stuff. But I guess I want to see... I wanted to see it more in like an intimate way and like how, how like the book is where it feels like a friend is just showing you like um, or, or telling you the story of how they yeah. came to this like super monumental decision because I feel like her Instagram is a little bit more detached. Like it's a yeah, little- Yeah, and the book like, she has, she like really talks through her like revelation right? yeah, and like the, the reason why she makes feels it more expresses. intimate and it feels uh-huh. like a more intimate conversation. And so I would love to see more of the day-to-day stuff that she shows on her Instagram as just like kind of yeah. More I believe that God has sent me the man of my dreams, but why does he insist on leaving the toilet seat up? Things like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like we learned a lot. Again, I think this is it's because it's nonfiction, and I think that the author goes out of her way to dispel the rumors. It worked. I learned. I learned quite a bit. So, um, thanks, Drea. It was a good pick. I um had my sister read it. And I would recommend it to anyone, um, really, because it's just really yeah, super no, funny. I, and I really like her style in general. Like I said, I, I enjoyed the first book. I enjoyed this book. I will continue reading and probably enjoying any other books she publishes in the future. Ooh, hey, Linda. All right. Uh, no, let's... Some people are haters. Do you remember when I posted about her first book on my Instagram? And that one lady lost her mind. Yeah, and that one lady oh, yeah. said, you are pushing for oppression of women across America. How could you? And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Girl, I went in. I, was I like, know. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, to say in I just like, <gasps> reported her. I was like, she's harassing my friend. Yeah, so I just, I appreciate that. You know, there are people out there who are showing different perspectives that sometimes can get very quickly shut down by others as a like, this is not a valid point of view because it doesn't align with my personal beliefs. Like, I feel like um, that she gets yeah. that a lot <laughs> in, in yeah. different different ranges of like, from like, haha to like openly like hostile. <laughs> yeah, and that's not fair because at no, at no point does this book say everyone should do this. Again, this is like yeah, her journey. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's, there's nothing wrong with like busting myths, hateful myths about your religion and your culture. It's just super it's, annoying. Like I don't people just get so sensitive when it comes to faith because somehow what an, what anyone does in their own life, there are certain people that think that their freedom of speech means that they can encroach on someone else's experience regardless mm-hmm. of what that means. But yeah. You know, I'm not a super religious person, but I've always been of the mindset that as long as your faith helps you in your life and, Mm -hmm. you know, as long as there's nothing you are doing to hurt other people, like I support, I support anyone practicing whatever religion or like theology they, they, they follow that helps them get through life because life is very hard. And if if, you know, if they're accepted by that religion, could you imagine if Huda was gay? Yeah, it. This would be a very different book. Very different book <laughs> for sure. But it it but again, it's one of those things where like, I'm glad she's here to represent, you know, her point of view, mm-hmm. and I hope that there are gay Hudas out there who soon. I mean, I'm sure there are, and they're just not as widely known. But, you know, hopefully we'll get to that point where publishing houses will <laughs> will welcome all of these different perspectives and we'll get to see wonderful books like this by, I mean, 
we're gonna read that my next book pick coincidentally enough the henna wars has Ooh. um <laughs> some queer muslim love in there so uh <laughs> yeah um you know it's out there but yeah you're right there's very different and i'm actually currently reading this book i don't know how familiar you guys yeah, are with it. it's called it's beautiful yeah the beauty of your face and um yeah and, and it's actually a completely different family experience than the one that we see in this book so it's really interesting um too if you want to read it it's really good and now start to see yeah. all right so final thoughts we all thought the book was super cool yay yeah. that's our next pick for next month yay in the living room. this is my pick wait let me see the cover i hadn't seen the cover that's cool yeah so i heard about this book because i follow this um girl her name is mallory o'meara and she wrote the book of the lady from the Black Lagoon, the, um, the biography of the woman who helped design and create the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh. And she's got a pretty cool Instagram feed um, and she's got this podcast reading glasses and she works on films and stuff. Uh, anyway, I had seen this and I thought it was, I just immediately, the first thing that caught my, my eye was like, choose your own erotic fantasy. And I <laughs> said, what? I never read anything like that before. Uh, that I can recall. <laughs> so I decided to, I had it on, on my list for a long time and I figured it was time to pull the trigger on it. So that's what we're checking out next um, next month. So the back, uh, this is by Joanna Angel and she's got this wicked, cool yeah. author portrait in the back. Some she's rocking. like, like I stand Joanna Angel. She's pretty chill. She's got her own company. Like she's, yeah, so it's got her bio down here. So I'm, I'll read you the, the, the blurb. I guess the blurb. No, the, they're not the blurbs. The blurbs are down here. But this, I guess the the summary, and then I'll read you her bio, that's back here. So, after graduating college, Taryn, T A R Y N, uh, mm -hmm. found herself lost and uncertain of what to do next. With a self-imposed, friendless, and sexless life, Taryn unexpectedly winds up working. The graveyard shift at Dreams with a Z, a sex shop in Pasco County, Florida. Tucked into a seedy strip mall on the side of a highway, hilarious and erotic surprises lurk around every neon lit corner. Your mission. In a sketchy and sexy world filled with tissues, gallons of lube, sex toys, tiger print, and swinger parties, help Taryn choose her way as she learns what happens in this small, unexpectedly kinky town. From butt plugs to cross-dressing truckers to being held up at gunpoint over dildos, experience this fun and sexy journey along with Taryn as she goes from shy and sweet to skilled and empowered. But how she gets there is up to you. Uh, the author blurb, the author bio says, Joanna Angel is an award-winning adult film star, director, producer, author, entrepreneur, and CEO of, venera of a, the venerated adult studio Burning Angel Entertainment. A true renaissance woman and inductee to AVN's Hall of Fame, uh, she is ready to flaunt her sinfully delicious mind and take the literary world by storm. <laughs> I'm pumped. <laughs> so she already kind of started reading it and she said it was really good. Yeah, so, I mean, it was like, fine. It's, it's not like amazing, amazing writing. <laughs> But it's much better and much more entertaining than I expected it to be. And, like, it gets kind of hot in some parts. I'm going to be honest. Like, I was reading through, like, Mira. And, <laughs> Ooh, open a window. <laughs> and I also learned about this thing called, like, electric play, which I didn't know existed. It's, it's Maybe we'll do a KWL about this book as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was super. Like, I went down. I it will look a little bit different than this one. <laughs> Like me fui en un Google search on my private browser of like what is what does this mean? And I'm just like, what? What is yeah. this? I guess we'll talk about it when we get together next month. So yeah, back to regular programming. We will be back uh, at the end of uh, next month. Is this okay? Remind me again, Drea. Is this our anniversary month or is this the next one? We'll have to. I'll have to uh, check it out. I can never remember because we have like the true anniversary and then the YouTube anniversary. Um, <laughs> whatever, our relationship is solid enough that I don't need to keep track. 
but also happy five year anniversary. Five years. Woo -hoo! <laughs> All right. So oh, um, you can, if you've made it this far, don't forget that you can check our link uh, in the description box of the YouTube video or the podcast uh, for our tip jar. So you can uh, throw some dollar bills at us. Um, you can find Andrea's Amazon link so you can check out Westwood Monster Patrol or A Christmas Baranda. Check out Tashai's uh, creative writing website and check me on my socials, mostly on Instagram. And uh, we'll see you next month for our erotic fantasy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>